the Jack Benny program. American. Fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. And LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes. LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. Year after year, at auction after auction, independent tobacco experts, men who spend their lives buying, selling, and handling tobacco, can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Real Lucky Strike tobacco. Fine tobacco that means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So oh, free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, yours truly Don Wilson, and our guest stars Victor Moore, Peter Lynn Hayes, and Frank Capra. Truly, Don Wilson. Hello, Rochester. Is Mr. Benny in? No, Mr. Benny took Miss Livingston to the movies. Oh, well, when he comes back, uh, will you tell him that, say, Rochester, did you bake a cake or something? I, I smell melted butter. Oh, that. Well, you see, every time Mr. Benny goes to the movies, I make him a bag of popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. Why doesn't he buy it at the theater? With butter and everything, it must cost more to make your popcorn at home. Theoretically, yes, but actually, no. Uh, what do you mean? Well, I make two bags, and he sells one of them to Miss Livingston. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, uh, in that way, you break even. Break even? Since the OPA went off, we're showing a profit. <laughs> but, Rochester, don't you take a loss on the kernels that don't pop? Mr. Benny will pop them if he has to take them to a blast furnace. <laughs> well, as long as Jack isn't home, I think I'll run along. If you care to wait, he ought to be back any minute now. They went to the neighborhood theater. Gosh, Jack, I'm sure glad you took me to see It's a Wonderful Life. I think it's a marvelous picture. Yeah, yeah. I thought the direction was great. Jimmy Stewart was sensational. Yeah, sensational, sensational. Jimmy gave that part just what it needed. I thought his acting was superb. All right, so his acting was superb. He's supposed to be a great actor. That's what he got paid for. Well, Jack, I saw your last picture. I returned the money. <laughs> Don't be so smart. Anyway, Mary, don't get me wrong. I like the picture. It's a wonderful life, but it's awfully hard to believe that part where Jimmy Stewart's angel comes down and shows him what would have happened if he hadn't been born. I don't know. It's too fantastic. Oh, you've been mad at pictures ever since they put out Bank Night. <laughs> I have not. It's just that I don't... Oh, Jack, that. let's stop and look in this jewelry window. Okay. Gee, what gorgeous jewelry they have here. Uh-huh. Oh, Jack. What? Look at that beautiful engagement ring. Mary, are you hinting? Uh-huh. Well, it won't do you any good. I'll never wear it. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go. No, I want to look at all these things in the window. Okay, okay. Oh, Martha. What is it, Emily? Isn't that Jack Benny standing over there? Well, I declare... My, but he's handsome. <laughs> Every time I see him, I get weak and wobbly all over. <laughs> oh, Martha. It's the truth, Emily. He really sends me. <laughs> and if I was 20 years younger, I'd go. <laughs> <laughs> Emily... Who's that girl with Mr. Benny? Why, that's Mary Livingston. Hmm. Look how tight she's holding on to his arm. I'd like to go over and pull her hair out. Oh, <laughs> stop being so irritable. You've been acting like this ever since Van Johnson got married. <laughs> you should talk, Emily. You broke your baseball bat when Lippy married Lorraine. <laughs> And 
Anyway, I think Jack Benny is quiet. Good. Here they come. Hello, Mr. Benny. Well, well, hello there. Isn't it rather late for you girls to be out? Girls! Girls! <laughs> come on, Mary. Let's go. Gee, Mary, Wilshire Boulevard looks beautiful at night, doesn't it? Yeah, all the light and... Say, Jack, isn't that Frank Capra? Who? Frank Capra, the man who directed the picture we just saw. It's a wonderful light. Yes, it is. Hello, Frank. Hello, Jack. Mary? <laughs> well, well, this is a coincidence, Frank. We just came from seeing your picture. Really? I go to that theater every day. You, you go to see your picture every day? No, I just go for the newsreel. I love to hear the governors of Georgia talk. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Mr. Capra, I want to congratulate you on your direction of It's a Wonderful Life. I thought it was great. Thank you, Mary. How'd you like it, Jack? Oh, I thought it was fine, Frank, but that part about the guardian angel was just a little too unbelievable. Well, Jack, in the picture, I didn't try to show what did happen. I tried to show what could happen if someone had never been born. I know, For but... example, uh, what do you think would have happened if you'd never been born? Well... There'd be a lot more money in circulation. <laughs> Mary, stop. But all in all, Frank, I did think it was a very entertaining picture. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Jack. Well, I have to run along now. Oh, just a minute, Frank. I'm glad we ran into each other because I've been wanting to talk to you about a picture for me. For you? <laughs> The, uh, you see, the studios have all been after me, but I thought that you, with your great insight into human nature, might better capture my personality. Jack, I'm late already. I, uh, I, think uh... of it, Frank, think of it. Frank Capra presents Jack Benny in King Lear. Then there's a tremendous blast of trumpets, and the scene opens with me in royal robes walking majestically toward the throne. Can't you just see it, Frank? Can't you? Can't you? Jack, let go of his collar. His face is turning blue. <laughs> oh, Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. Well, smog or no smog, it's good to be breathing again. <laughs> what? Well, so long, King Lear. See you later. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mary. Frank. <laughs> uh, come on, Mary, I'll walk you home. Yes, Your Majesty. Oh, quiet. <laughs> Rochester. Oh, Rochester. Is that you, boss? Yes. Mr. Wilson dropped by, but I told him you were at the movies and he wouldn't wait. Oh, well, I'll see you tomorrow. Come here a minute and... Rochester, what's that penny on the table? Huh? Oh, mi while Mr. Wilson was here, he stepped into the bathroom and weighed himself. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, how much uh, How much does Mr. Wilson weigh now? I don't know, but you got a lot of broken tile in the bathroom. <laughs> hmm. Say, boss, how'd you like the picture? It's a wonderful life? Oh, very much, Rochester, but a little too fantastic. You know, the angel and everything. I don't know. Say, Rochester, I'm a little sick to my stomach. I'm going to the medicine cabinet and take something. Mm -hmm. There it is. A couple of swallows of this, and I'll feel much better. This ought to fix me up. Oh, darn it, I dropped the glass. Well, I'll just drink a little out of the bottle. And... Oh, my goodness. Look at that label. This is iodine. I almost poisoned myself. Oh, boy, am I glad I dropped the glass. What a lucky accident. That was no accident, Jack. Huh? I knocked the glass out of your hand. You knocked the... Wait a minute. How did you get in here? 
Who are you? I'm your guardian angel. <laughs> what? My guardian angel? Yes, I've been watching over you all of your life. I've guided you and I've protected you. Guided me? Protected me? Yes, I've governed every move you ever made. Oh, you mean it's you who kept me from spending my money? <laughs> so you've done pretty well with that yourself. <laughs> Thank you. But you saved my life, and you don't even know me. Oh, you're wrong, Jack. I know everything about you. Remember when you were seven years old, you broke a window and you blamed it on your sister, Florence? Yeah. Yes, that's right. And remember when you were ten years old, how proud you were when you put on your first two pairs? <laughs> that, that was for a school play. Well, the play is over. Take it off. <laughs> Hey, you, you do know a lot of things about me. Well, Angel, it, it was nice of you to save my life and, and come again sometime. Huh? Oh, I can't go yet because, you see, I was sent down here to prove something to you. Prove what? I'm going to show you what would have happened if you had never been born. You mean like, like what I saw in the picture tonight? Yes. Come with me. No, 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 no. I'm not coming with you. No, sir, I'm afraid. Oh, you're nothing to fear. Come on now, come on. I'm not coming with you. Let go of my arm. Let go of my arm. Rochester! Rochester! Hmm, that's funny. Rochester! You have no Rochester. What do you mean I have no Rochester? You've been my butler for ten years. No, he hasn't. You've never been born. <laughs> you mean, you mean there's no Jack Benny? That's right. Now come. Come with me. Hey, where are we? What are we doing in this department store? This is the May Company. <laughs> oh, yeah. And there's Mary behind the stocking counter, like she used to be years ago. What is she doing back here? She never left here. You see, you were never born to take her away. She, she... She looks good. Well, of course, she's been eating regularly. <laughs> oh, this whole thing is crazy. I'm going over to Mary and ask her myself. Oh, Mary! Mary! Yes, sir? What can I do for you? What are you doing behind the stocking counter? Why aren't you on the radio? Well, that's a new approach. They generally ask me why I'm not in pictures. But, Mary, please, don't you recognize me? Don't you know me? Have you forgotten all about our radio work? What radio work? What work? Are you crazy? What do you do every Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock? I take a bath, do you mind? <laughs> Mary, Mary, please listen to me, will I'll you? thank you not to be so familiar. Please call me by my last name. Okay, okay. Now listen, Miss Livingston. It's Mrs. Clingenpeel. <laughs> Mrs. Herman Clingenpeel. Mrs.? You're married? I can't believe... Just a little while ago, you tried to buy me an engagement ring. You can't be married. Well, ask my husband. He's the floor walker. What? Here he comes now. Oh, yes. Mister? Mister? Yes? <laughs> Is this true? Are you two married? Well, if we're not, we certainly gypped the bride and groom program out of a two-week's honeymoon. <laughs> oh, stop. Mary, this is all a terrible mistake. Angel? Angel, where are you? Just a minute. I'm opening a charge account. <laughs> Well, what's taking you so long? They don't believe my address. <laughs> Never mind that now. Take me out of here. Take me to Dennis Day. He'll know me. All right, Jack. Hold on. Here we go. Angel. What are we doing here in New York City? Why, don't you recognize this place? This is Studio H in NBC. Oh, yeah. And there's Dennis Day walking up to the microphone. Oh, Dennis! Dennis! Sorry, Pop. No autograph. <laughs> I don't want your autograph. Dennis, don't you recognize me? I'm Jack Benny. Who? Benny. Jack Benny. Listen. Can it be the trees that fill the breeze with rare and magic perfume? I don't know about the perfume, but your singing stinks. <laughs> 
Angel. Angel, he doesn't even know me. Well, of course he doesn't know you. Jack Benny doesn't exist. Doesn't? You mean are still... still waiting to be born. Waiting to be born? That's ridiculous. Look at my hair. It's gray. Yeah, you've been waiting a long time. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, think a minute. I'm Jack Benny, the man you work for. Oh, no, mister, you're wrong. I work for that man over there, the one with the baggy eyes. Where? Thank you, thank you, and welcome to... Hey, what's going on here? I've got a program to do, and I don't need any outside help. Why well, was... For... What? Why, you're Fred Allen. You were expecting maybe Uncle Remus? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Fred, wait a minute. Don't you pretend you never met me either. I'm sorry. I don't believe I ever had the pleasure. Pleasure? Fred, look at me. I'm Jack Benny. The man you hate. Me? Me hate anybody. Why, everyone knows Fred Allen loves the whole world. I love my writers. I love the NBC vice presidents and the censors, too. I love the little lads and lassies who ask me for my autograph as they wipe their little noses on my sleeve. <laughs> and believe me, sir, I love you, too. Angel. Angel, there must be something wrong. Fred Allen doesn't hate anybody. Certainly, you weren't born yet. <laughs> Wait a minute, Fred. You and Dennis are just pretending you don't know me. But the rest of your cast will. The rest of my cast? There are no other performers on my program, just Dennis and myself. Oh, yeah? What about Senator Claghorn and Titus Moody and Ajax Cassidy? Why, I thought everybody knew Dennis plays all those parts. You mean Dennis or Senator Claghorn? I'm from the South, son. I just got back from a party, and I'm in my cup. Dixie, that is. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And he's Titus Moody? Howdy, bub. <laughs> Dennis, and you play Ajax Cassidy, too? How do you feel playing all those parts? Oh, terrible, 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 terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not long for this world. <laughs> Angel, Angel, there must be someone who knows me. I know. Take me to see Don Wilson. He's worked for me for 14 years. He'll remember me. Don's been with me through thick and thick. I mean thin. <laughs> All right, Jack, I'll take you to see Mr. Wilson. Gee, you're such an obliging angel. Don't you mind taking me from one person to another? No, I get mortal to mortal pay. <laughs> Let's go. Well, here we are in Lexington, Kentucky. Lexington, Kentucky? Yes, and there's Mr. Wilson sitting on the porch. He owns this big tobacco plantation. Mm -hmm. Hey, Don. Don. Don Wilson. Colonel Wilson to you, sir. Keegan, Illinois, named Benny. Nice people. Always wish they had a son. They had a son. It's me. Well, I don't know anything about that, but if you'll excuse me, i got to talk to my tobacco pickers. Here they come. The tobacco pickers? Yes. Hello, fellas. You all. <laughs> you all. Don. Colonel Wilson. Hemo boy. <laughs> That's my quartet, the sportsman. I don't know anything about a quartet, sir, but these boys are happy in their work picking that fine, that light, that know, naturally but... mild, lucky strike tobacco. Don. And they keep singing all the time, always singing. Way down upon the Swanee River, far, far away. L-S-M-F-T-O-U. There's where my heart is Auctioneers play Where Effie Boone and Speedy Rick Learn to sing and chant L.S. and the P.O. There's where my heart is turning ever There's where the old folks stay Effie Boone and Speedy still Longing for 
Don't walk away. They've gone, Jack. Are you convinced now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm convinced. Angel, take me back home, please. No, not yet, Jack. There's one more place I'd like to show you. Come. Where are we? What town is this? Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. See why that's where Phil Harris comes from. Yeah, and this is the nightclub where he works. Phil Harris works in this awful dump? Yes, you see, you weren't born, so you never took him away from here. <laughs> well, well, I'm glad. This is where he belongs. <laughs> let's let's go in and see him. All right. Follow me right down these stairs. That's what a crummy nightclub. Look at the name of it. The Ruiz Club. What about it? Ruiz spelled backwards is sewer. <laughs> well, that makes very little difference to Mr. Harris. He can't even spell frontwards. <laughs> Come on, Jack. Follow me down these stairs. Wait down. All right. Watch your step. If I go down any farther, I'll get the bend. Well, I don't like this any more than you do. I'm an angel, and the further down I go, the nearer I get to enemy territory. <laughs> well, I guess it's just a few more steps down. Here, here we are. Won't you come with me to Alabama? Let's go see my dear old mammy. She's frying eggs and broiling hammy, and that's what I like about the South. There you can make no mistake, where those nerves are never shaky. Ought to taste her layer cakey, and that's what I like about the South. <laughs> Angel. Angel, isn't that awful? Yes, that's why we sent you so much thunder. We're trying to drown him out. <laughs> Thanks. Well, folks, here I am again, your favorite master of ceremonies, Phil Harris. <laughs> Funny thing happened to me today, folks. Guy walked up to me and said, uh, Mr. Harris, where'd you get that black eye? So I told him it was a birthmark, and he said, a birthmark? And I said, yeah, I got the wrong birth. <laughs> don't explain it to him, lady. If you don't get it, just let him suffer. Let him lay there. <laughs> don't tell him nothing. Well, Phil, Phil Harris. Pardon me, folks, there's an old heckler down here in the front row. Uh, yeah? What do you want, Bob? Phil, look at me. Look at me, Phil. Don't you recognize me? I never saw you before in my life, Buster. But I'm Jack Benny. I'm your boss. What do you mean, boss? I own this joint myself. Lock, stock, and demi John. <laughs> At Barrow. Don't tell me what to keep my bourbon in. <laughs> All right, so you don't work for me, but what does Alice think about you being here? Who? Alice Faye, your wife. Alice Faye, the moving picture star married to me? Yeah. Hey, waiter, what's the idea of selling this old gentleman more than one zombie? <laughs> Look, I'm not drunk. Aren't you married to Alice Lee? Of course I ain't. That's my little wife right over there. Hey, baby, come here. I'd like you to meet someone. Any friend of yours is a friend of mine, talent boy. <laughs> well, wait a minute. You, you should know me. You're my girlfriend. You're Gladys Abisco. Gladys Abisco, Harris, if you please, and I never went out with you in my life. Look, honey, maybe you went out with a guy on a blind date. I'd never get that blind. <laughs> but you must, you must remember me. Look at me, look. Come on, Jack, I think we better be going again. Well, all right, Angel. But I'm not licked yet. I'll prove to you that I was born. Well, I'll give you one last chance. Where do you want me to take you now? Let's see. 
I know. Take me to Warner Brothers Studios. They'll know me there. Well, uh, Jack, here we are at the studio. Yeah, and there's the executive officer. Let's go in and see the Warner Brothers. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, listen to them laugh. <laughs> listen to them. <laughs> listen to them. <laughs> Why are the Warner Brothers so happy? Because you were never born, so you didn't make the horn blows at midnight. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Listen to me, Mr. Warner. Listen to me. Stop laughing. Stop laughing. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Where do they go? Where do they... Oh, Angel. Angel. Angel, where are you? Here I am, boss. <laughs> Oh, hello, Rochester. I rushed in here when I heard a glass crash. Oh, yes, yes, I I just dropped my medicine. Your medicine? The boss, that bottle in your hand is iodine. I know, I know. I was just putting it back. Thanks, Rochester. Ladies and gentlemen, the part of the angel was played by Victor Moore, who will soon be seen in that wonderful picture at Happen on Fifth Avenue. Fred Allen was impersonated by Peter Lynn Hayes, while Frank Capra appeared through the courtesy of Mr. Capra. The bottle of iodine came from the corner drugstore. <laughs> Jack will be back in just a minute, but first, here is my good friend, Basil Rysdale. As you listen to the chant of the tobacco auctioneer, remember LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. Mr. Floyd Green Clay of Brasales, Kentucky, has been an independent tobacco warehouseman for 26 years. He said, I've seen American buy tobacco that's ripe and mild. Tobacco with real flavor and mellowness. And I know you can't beat that fine tobacco for top smoking enjoyment. I've smoked Luckies myself for 17 years. Remember, at auction after auction, year after year, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Clay can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. No doubt about it. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Say, hey, Rochester... Rochester, have you ever had a feeling that there's somebody watching everything you do? You know, somebody who knows every move you make, knows everywhere you go, even when you think he doesn't? Yes, boy. You know who it is? Yes, and I wish you'd cut it out. I don't mean that. I... This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>